and welcome back to another chemistry academy video so this one is the chemistry of cooking which i thought i would make while i'm cooking my dinner so i eat the same thing basically all the time so tonight i'm making chicken sausage pasta because that's what i have most evenings and um, so while i'm doing that i will talk to you about the chemistry of my dinner so the first thing i'm going to add in are chicken sausages so these are mostly protein um, and we're going to talk about what happens to protein when you cook it. So for greasing my pan, I have a one cal spray, which is a, a olive oil cooking spray. So that means it's more unsaturated, so the chains will be tight. And, and therefore, <laughs> I'm very clumsy. Um, and therefore, the molecules can pack neatly. So that's why it has a low melting point and it's a liquid. Um, if I had this stored for a very long time and it was exposed to oxygen, it would most likely oxidise and turn rancid. So if I was to scoose this and I had a strong, not very nice foul smell, then I would throw it in the bin and get something else. Here's me cutting up my chicken sausages and adding them to the hot pan. As soon as they hit the hot pan, the protein in the chicken will start to denature, so the chains will unwind irreversibly and change shape. So now I'm going to start boiling my pillows, mm -hmm. uh, my mushroom tortelloni, and then I've got some gnocchi as well, which I'm actually going to fry. Um, but yeah, and then I've got vegetables too, some peppers and mushrooms. I love mushrooms, it doesn't really have anything to do with chemistry, but maybe it makes me a fun guy, who knows. So I've also got a tomato well, pizza bread. So garlic has a very strong smell and the reason for that is because the fragrance molecules in it are very volatile. So what that generally means is they don't have very strong van der Waals forces between the molecules so they probably have something like LDFs. Whereas my peppers, for example, when I cut them up, I didn't really smell them and that's probably because the fragrance molecules in them um, have like hydrogen bonding between them so they might have hydroxyl groups on them. Um, so yeah, the types of Vanderbilt's forces that the molecules have between them can make a difference to how volatile it is and then therefore how strongly you taste it and smell it. So I'm also adding some spinach, nice green spinach to make it nice and strong. If I was to put this in the water with my pasta, then the colour pigment would come out of it and that's because the green colour pigment is polar and so is water and light dissolves light. So the green pigment will end up in the water. I therefore, because I want to keep the green colour in the spinach, I'm going to cook it in the frying pan. And um, I also don't think boiled spinach would taste very nice because the flavour molecules will most likely be polar and therefore will be lost into the water as well. So when you're making soup, it doesn't really matter because you're drinking the water. But if you're going to discard the water after you've cooked it, you want to make sure you know if your flavours are polar or not, or any of the other nutrients that you want to keep in your food are polar or not because if they're polar and you cook it in polar water you're going to lose it all so anything that's polar you would ideally want to cook in oil which is non-polar and then that will retain all your flavors and nutrients in the food well any water soluble ones anyway but if you were to cook it in oil and your molecules were fat soluble, so non-polar molecules, then you would lose them to the oil. Which is how you can make like chili infused oil, etc. Because all of those non-polar flavour molecules leach out into the oil that you store it in, and that's how you get the oil infused with those flavours. Yeah. Um, so this is my stirring sauce. I'll be sponsor me. <laughs> um, and this has got water-based components and also fat based components which means in order for this to actually be a whole mixture it must contain an emulsifier in order to keep the polar liquids and non-polar liquid mix together and um, so i can't actually see on here what the emulsifier actually is but there will be some in there so yeah it contains an emulsifier so i've still got some sauce stuck in my jar um, and I'm going to do that Italian thing where you add some of your pasta water to your sauce. Um, the reason that that is a thing is most likely because some of the flavour molecules will have leached out into the pasta water that you cooked it in. 
then you have the polar flavour molecules. So, so we have adding it back into the sauce. So, that's my <laughs> sous chef, and there's my dinner with all the macronutrients I need, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Um, so lastly, food obviously goes off through the process of oxidation. So when it's exposed to oxygen, it starts to oxidize and that's what makes it go off. So what will be added to food usually are things called antioxidants. So antioxidants are molecules that will themselves oxidize first, which saves your food from being oxidized for a while. So they'll only last so long. Um, but yes, antioxidants will slow down the oxidation process, which allows the food to last longer. So it will act as like a preservative. There are preservatives that work in other ways as well, where they stop bacteria from growing, etc. Um, but the more common one that you'll hear about in the higher chemistry course are antioxidants, which prevent the food from oxidizing and get oxidized themselves. Um, so hope you find that helpful. I'm really sorry this front camera seems to keep jumping. It's very irritating. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you find this helpful, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Chemistry Academy. And if you make chicken sausage pasta, let me know. Bon appétit. <laughs>